Not a problem. How how you been? Good, good, busy. You know, I I, I can't complain. Yeah, I've been uh, busy a lot. I mean, I've been seeing yeah. a lot of stuff like Moon Knight. Um, you know, a lot of Marvel sure. stuff. Yeah, I'm not sure. So, uh, yeah, they've been great to work with over there, and um, uh, yeah, you know, it's been really fun, and 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 you know, now it's getting me more work. Um, uh, now that I've got a uh, Space Ghost over at Dynamite, and uh, they've offered me a really uh, nice, generous runway for this book, and so uh, yeah, you know, things are things are going great. You know, I'm just kind of juggling work, and I'm I'm getting married in the fall, so planning all oh, that. Congratulations, brother! Thank you, thank you. Long time coming. Um. But uh, yeah, it's been it's been good. Uh, the right kind of chaos, the right kind of uh, uh, busy. Uh, but yeah, I feel I feel very lucky and uh, very grateful. That's really awesome. And you know, with Space Ghost coming about, I mean, like, yeah, tell me more about Space Ghost. I mean, I know I know Space Ghost from Space Ghost Coast to Coast, and I saw like sure. a few of his cartoons. But tell me more about yeah. your um inter- your first introduction to Space Ghost. Sure. Well, yeah, uh, you know, I, I grew up a child of the 90s. So my my Me introduction too. to Space Ghost was also coast to coast. Um, you know, for, for years, I, I only knew of him as this ironic talk show host. And it, it wasn't until my first internship at, at, at DC Comics that I, I realized uh, the history of all of it. Um, I got to I, I started learning about like the history of comics and some of the, the, the iconic figures uh, in comics history. And so Alex Toth was one of them. The, uh, the designer and creator of Space Ghost. And so um, that's when I realized like, oh, Space Ghost was like, actually got his start the same year as Adam West's Batman. And it was a traditional yeah. super thick. Uh, and you can see a lot of shared DNA between those two shows. And um, I, I think while I was at DC, either they did a re-release of the Joe Kelly and Ariel Olivetti trade, or somehow I got a copy of it. Um, mm-hmm. And so uh, I, I was reading that and that was a very uh, Batman Begins kind of oh yeah stuff. it was i think i've read it too was it yeah. where he was like a former peacekeeper or something yeah and like yeah yeah you know and and so i i realized uh not only was he you know a, a superhero uh with sort of in the traditional style in, in in the 1960s but that there was like a wide variety of interpretations and tones to the character and so as i started kind of uh, uh learning more and more about space ghost i realized like he has a lot of shared dna with characters like Batman and Superman, but even mm-hmm. like Iron Man, uh, because uh, for those who aren't familiar with the character, you know, he's not he, he's not superhuman. He doesn't have, uh, you know, in, inherent powers of his own. They're all tech based. He's got his power bands, which uh, give him a, a, a variety of powers, including uh, uh, power over fire, power over ice, uh, laser beams, uh, force fields. And then he's got his invisible belt, uh, which allows him to turn invisible uh you know sort of as the space ghost uh name and um in addition to like you know uh flight and enhanced strength uh as well as he's he he's uh he teams up with uh, not one but three sidekicks uh, uh teenage twins uh, jan and jace and their pet monkey blip i remember blip <laughs> yeah um and so it, it was one of those things um you know like 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 it's, it seems like many projects that i do in the licensed sphere uh, I, you know, I learned about these things and I kind of had it rattling around in the back of my head uh, for just the right moment. Uh, and in this case, Dynamite Entertainment uh, had just announced a, a, a partnership with Warner Brothers Discovery doing a line of licensed comics. And so they, they announced that at New York Comic Con last year and uh, uh, Joe Rybant, uh, an editor over there, uh, I had been emailing with Dynamite for years. Uh, I've known Nick Barucci over there for about 15 years. And so every time I'd, I'd have a new book coming out, I'd be emailing Dynamite and being like, hey, just want to let you know I got something new coming out. And so having worked on uh, Moon Knight City, The Dead and Punisher uh, over at Marvel, I think uh, Dynamite said, OK, like we've got this like really like true blue superhero uh, uh, property that we're working on. We would love for David to work on it. And so, um, yeah, when Joe approached me, I I, I was so taken by the, the the universe of potential to this character. Uh, Alex Toth was a, a brilliant designer, and he would uh, he, he it was just fastball after fastball, you know, uh, you know, from Space Ghost design to his his iconic bench of villains, Zorak, Brack, Metallus, the Council of Doom, and more. Um, and the thing that really got me was, you know. All these original episodes of Space Ghost were five or six minutes a pop. They're very short, you know, oh, yeah. in between a dino boy. 
And so um, those those episodes were really based on just like energy and vibes. You know, we never really got a chance to there's no history or continuity to any of these episodes. It's just, you know, you you, you drop readers right in the thick of it. There's a villain that shows up. Space Ghost uh, has to stop him and boom, you're on to the next episode. And so the great thing about this for me is that we're really taking the comics medium and 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 getting to dig even deeper into this universe. So not only are we sort of taking the original vision and energy of the 60s uh, uh, cartoon and kind of bringing it into 2024 storytelling, but we're also able to really do a deep dive and explore these characters in as dynamic and, and, and character driven a way as possible. Awesome. Can you tell me more about that deep dive too of like what yeah. you're planning to do with the space ghosts? Sure. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, for me, uh, when I when I started uh, working on this project, I I researched everything. I watched every single episode of the original '60s series. Oh wow! Every episode of the '80s revival and Space Stars. I uh, I even watched uh, uh, Space Ghost teaming up with uh, Batman and the Brave and the Bold. Uh, you know, That's I cool. I reread every comics appearance, um, uh, including you know. Mark Evanier and Steve Rude's uh, Comico one shot, uh, you know, in addition to all the DC stuff, just to kind of get my head around like, oh, there's so many different facets to this universe. But for me, it's also, you know, we're able to kind of like uh, really flesh out this world and kind of give it like one big cohesive narrative. Uh, the, the, the big influences that I have for this series are Batman, the animated series and Batman, the long Halloween. And so uh, you know, for me, it's it's we're able to take Space Ghost and really put him through a gauntlet of all, all of these iconic villains. And so everybody you're expecting, you're going to see them at some point, as well as a, a few deeper cuts that you might not expect. But the, the the big question that I had when when I was looking at this is, you know, um, you see a character like Batman and sometimes he's got a sidekick and sometimes he doesn't, you know, like it's 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 just it, it, it's it can go in, in, in either direction, depending on what comic you have. But for me, what really stood out about Space Ghost is he doesn't have just one sidekick. He has three. Um, and they were just as part, a much part of those original episodes as he was. And so for me, uh, the big question I had was like, well, how did that happen? Like, how does, yeah. how does a vigilante wind up, you know, taking in two kids and a monkey? It feels like a, it was a very specific choice on the part of the original cartoon. And it's something I wanted to honor. And so um, that's really the emotional through line of our series is that without spoiling too much, uh, we're going to see how Space Ghost winds up in Jan and Jace's orbit. That's really the crux of our first issue uh, in that Jan and Jace have sort of a tragedy that, 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 that kind of spurs them on this journey. And, and Space Ghost has his own tragedy that sort of led him on this years of, of crusading the spaceways. And so um, what happens when they kind of encounter each other for the first time? And so we'll get to see their dynamic evolve on really an issue to issue basis. So how Jan and Jace go from being these uh, uh, orphaned, uh, orphaned rescues to becoming Space Ghost sidekicks, to becoming trusted partners in their own right, and eventually kind of the surrogate found family uh, and eventually kind of giving Space Ghost a new reason to live. Uh, and so really like the found family element is something that uh, I, I think makes me fall in love with the characters. I think if readers haven't, um, haven't fallen in love with those characters by like the second issue. I think your heart is made of a sterner stuff than mine, but yeah. uh, it's a nice study in contrast where we're able to kind of have this, this variety of, of cool villains, which then leads to a variety of, of different tones and even genres of adventures that we can put these characters in, but it's always rooted in that uh, four band dynamic between space ghost, Jan, Jace and blip. Yeah, because like I think in that previous issue that was written by DC Comics, we see a little bit of that, but we don't see too much of it. Yeah, um, uh, that, that really stood out to me was that, yeah, you know, in Joe Kelly's run, uh, Jan and Jace appear briefly. Um, you know, Space yeah. Ghost, it, like we, we, that you really follow Space Ghost from becoming a, a, a peacekeeper to uh, uh, basically, you know, being on the outs for, with his, with his peacekeeper group and then w waking up on this, uh, on this, uh, seemingly deserted planet and kind of coming back um, uh, as a vigilante. And so it's it, it takes a few issues before he even rescues Jan and Jace. And then they they really are kind of, they don't really factor too much into that into that narrative. I think he, he comes back for them at the end. Uh, yeah. And even in Future Quest, uh, you know, with Jeff Parker and Doc Shanner, um, Space Ghost himself really 
it kind of bookends that story. Um, and I believe it's Jan that we see a decent amount of in that, but like, they're not really as a unit in this. So I feel like, you know, seeing that it's not an origin story in that we're going to belabor the point of how Space Ghost became Space Ghost. We actually are going to cover that pretty quickly, pretty early on. But uh, it's more of an origin story of how did this team come together? And I think that's a really fun thing for me. I, I, I always say the in the same way that like evolution always wants to turn everything into a crab. Uh, I feel like for me, I always want to turn everything <laughs> into an ensemble piece. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, I like the variety of voices and personalities. And for me, the the, the fun of a story is watching characters play off of each other. And so, um, yeah, I I, I I consider this very much an ensemble book. Um, Space Ghost, of course, you know, he's our title character. Um, but having, you know, like, we're, there's not going to be an issue where, like, Jan or Jace or Blip or MIA. Like, this, this is very much uh, a four-man group. Um, and so... Being able to explore their personalities was a lot of fun for me. I mean, Space Ghost, for example, um, we, we'll learn a little bit, uh, you know, as as the series goes on. But he has he, he's 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 a tragic figure. You know, he he's been the yeah. uh, survivor of his colony, which is now referred to as the Ghost Planet. Um, and that that attack on his planet turned him into this kind of Cape Crusader, where he's he's out there. Pirates and hijackers are like hitting distant colonies all the time. The universe is a big place and the galactic patrol can't be everywhere at once. And so Space Ghost is kind of sort of getting his revenge one pirate at a time. Oh, wow. Um, you know, but at the same time, that experience, it's really isolated him. You know, it's it's sort of uh, he hasn't really moved on from his tragedy at all. Um, and, and so I say, you know, you put him in the room with a pirate and he knows exactly what to do. But like as a human being, he's very much a work in progress, um, you know, and so uh, he's sort of the, the 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 least likely single dad figure you would expect. But circumstances are going to kind of put him in that role. And then meanwhile, you have uh, Jan and Jace, uh, the, the, the twins. And, uh, you know, they're they're You can see it on our preview pages and in our solicit copy. So it's not too much of a spoiler. But, you know, their uh, their colony is attacked by pirates and uh, and what winds up happening is is that that is a colony that space ghost is trying to rescue and that's how they kind of uh come together come together yeah but i i think jan and jace uh and, and blip as well I, I think are really special characters for me because i think it speaks to something that i grew up with something that's very personal to me in that uh, my younger siblings are triplets and so oh, i wow. know yeah so that's why i'm not scared of comics or deadlines is because i've had to juggle three toddlers before uh, <laughs> i turned <laughs> And so I, um, uh, I think it's it's something that's very personal to me. I know how multiples work very very well in a very personal way. Uh, for example, my siblings they were born a minute apart, and that minute shaped their entire dynamic. They're almost thirty years old now, and and um, you know my brother who was born two minutes ahead of the other two, everybody kind of defers to him as the oldest. Um, oh wow! Like, yeah, like the dog of of, of of that trio. And then my baby sister, who was two minutes behind, you know, everybody kind of dotes on her as the baby sister. And then my middle brother is kind of, you know, the most middle brother who ever middled. Uh, <laughs> so I, I really took that to inform my approach on Jan and Jace. Um, for me, uh, the, the big influences were um, uh, Dick Grayson and Babs Gordon, sort of at the beginning of their careers, but also yeah. uh, Lips and Tim from Jurassic Park. And so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for me, Jan uh, is the oldest, you know, by a minute. And so, you know, she's the she's the responsible one. She's the thoughtful one. She's the one who thinks things through. Uh, she finds herself in a position that a lot of uh, only girls do in their families uh, when it's just them and then a bunch of guys is that, you know, she's got to she's got to kind of think about things because Jay certainly won't. And even Space Ghost sometimes gets tunnel vision. But that means also she's tough. She's feisty. She's the one who calls out Space Ghost on his crap, like to his face. Oh um, wow! We, you know we have we have a, a a a scene early on in the run where she just lets Space Ghost have it, and Space Ghost kind of takes off uh, because he would much rather like punch out an asteroid field than deal with the wrath of a fourteen year old girl. And I think that's something like a lot of single dads can like probably appreciate. Um, but, you know, she's tough, you know, she's a crack shot with a blaster. And I think for her, um, you know, she's got her own tragedies, you know, she, she and Jace, 
Um, and so she feels like she's got to keep everything together. Like she, if, if she's not, uh, uh, responsible, it'll all fall apart. And then like what little family she has left, it'll get scattered to the winds. Uh, Jace is kind of the, the, the id to her superego a bit in that, uh, he's, he's, he's the impulsive one. He's the one who will uh, leap before he looks. I, I don't know if we'll ever get to it specifically in text, but the way that I kind of always imagined him is that, you know, he, he's probably dyslexic. He probably was not like great in a traditional classroom setting, but he's a natural with his hands. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a natural mechanic. He's a born pilot. Uh, he's the one who's always cracking jokes. He's the one with a sense of humor. And I think he sees it as, you know, we lost our family and, you know, Jan has so much on her shoulders and space goes can be kind of a brooding figure it, he feels like it's up to him to kind of keep the group together by trying to make them laugh uh, and i think that's like a very sweet kind of characterization um and, and kind of like dick grayson so, yeah so like having those the you know jan and jace's contrasts to, to space ghost himself and then they have their their pet monkey blip who uh you know is, i i thought for a, a, as i was putting this together i was like should we keep blip and i thought yeah you have to you know it's such a specific choice to that original cartoon that like it would be like having a sunday without a cherry on top yeah i and think that so, was like you know the the downside to the last comic i felt was just that uh, there was no blip sure yeah well you know i i think um blip is a really fun character and you know watching the original space ghost uh episodes he kind of reminds me of not not in a grim and gritty way but he kind of reminds me of wolverine and the hellfire club um, where like this was before Wolverine was like Wolverine, the flagship mutant of all X Men. Mm -hmm. But you know, bef before that Hellfire Club issue, everybody kind of overlooked him. And then you know he's the last man standing, and he's thrown into this sewer, and he's like, "All right, you had your shot. It's my turn." And I feel like Blip has actually a lot in common in, in that uh, you know Space Ghost and the twins would get captured, and everybody would overlook Blip, and then Blip is the yeah. one who kind of like pulls out the win uh you know uh snatches victory out of the jaws of defeat and so uh you know he's a fun character um you know he's sort of, he's the loyal pet he's jan and jace's pet um before everything goes down at their colony and um you know he he he's loyal to a fault he loves those kids but he's also he's mischievous and he's food driven and um uh he's very funny like we we always try to kind of make a, a, a have an opportunity in each issue just to have like for blip to have some sort of moment because um honestly it's such a weird choice that that i was like i have to honor this it's so specific yeah um, but he's also he's very important i i i'm not going to spoil too much but you'll kind of get an inkling by issue one but uh blip is very important i'd say he's the linchpin of our whole narrative uh, and so uh having those characters together um, it really, it, it lends a nice, uh, dramatic friction, uh, space ghost mission, you know, his life is not built for kids. Uh, and so really the metaphor that I see it as is he's a single guy who suddenly like adopted two kids and a pet and the he's in a little, father, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, he's in a little over his head. Um, and meanwhile, these kids also have to roll with it because ghost planet is not built for children. Um, and so, uh, yeah, watching them kind of play off of each other and sometimes they bicker and sometimes they argue and, uh, they don't always see eye to eye on the way to do things. Um, and that will often mean that, you know, sometimes the kids will kind of go off half cocked and space ghost will be like, oh no, like, how do I protect these kids? Um, and vice versa. Sometimes space ghost, you know, uh, is, is, is down for the count and it's these kids that are the X factor that kind of let them, you know, see, you know, live to see another day. And, um, watching them kind of like bicker and grow and learn from each other and start to trust each other and then like start to feel really protective of one another it's a really fun character arc uh, for all involved I, I think um the closest things that i can say that i've written to space ghost it's not as bleak as spencer and Locke, but i think that like core bond of of of, of partnership and friendship i think uh really carries through to space ghost and also my work in Savage Avengers. I, I think when people, when we first announced that book, a lot of people said, oh, that's a cover with a lot of gritty dudes. And then, you know, by, by like issue three, uh, you suddenly are like, oh, they all kind of have like warm marshmallow centers to them. Like they all it's just need a friend. Yeah. yeah um, you know, uh, uh, and so I think there's a lot of DNA of those books in Space Ghost, uh, but we're able to kind of take this high flying cosmic adventure as well. 
Um, and so, yeah, it's been a real gift as a writer to be able to work in a series like that. And uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm having a real blast working on it. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. I mean, a lot of what you said about Jan and Jace and the relationship between Jan and Jace and Space Ghost yeah. and that whole dynamic and blip. You know, it yeah. kind of reminds me a lot of like, you know, Carl from The Walking Dead even where, you know, kids sure. like Carl where they grow up and then like they're, you know, they're in a world that's not really built for them, but yet they have right. to adapt, you know, or else yeah. they die. Yeah. And and I will say we're, we're certainly not, um, we're not grim or great at this book at all. Like yeah. totally. We're, we're, we're definitely in between Batman the Animated Series and Batman the Long Halloween. And I know some people, and and, and understandably so, uh, given that I wrote Spencer and Locke and I wrote the OZ, uh, you know, they're like, oh, is, is he doing like a grim, like Robert Pattinson's The Space Ghost? Uh, mm -hmm. That's not the case uh, uh, whatsoever. I mean, the only DNA that I would say we might have in common with that movie is just, I really enjoyed the way that they kind of um, uh, added new wrinkles to the villains, you know, the way that they interpreted uh, Penguin and Riddler. Like the new wrinkles, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and we are, that is something we are going to be doing with with each of the villains in that, uh, like I said, in the original cartoons, they really relied a lot on the designs. Um, and there was little bits and pieces of characterization to be sure. Uh, you know, Brack, for example, he's not a he's not a, a, a world conqueror by any means. He's not somebody out who's looking to take over the world. He's he's a he's a pirate. He's looking to get paid. He's looking to, you know, hijack whatever. Rich, the next yeah. Yeah. You know, whereas like somebody like Zorak, Zorak, you know, he's 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 a homicidal praying mantis. And I think there's something like inherently alien about the way that he sees the world, which kind of makes him a really nice arch nemesis for Space Ghost. In that Space Ghost is sort of a guy who's playing and not being a human being, you know, based on his core concept. But he 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 is very much a human being. Like there's definitely a human heart beating underneath that that cape and cowl. Whereas Zorak is just kind of like over the bed, like just a, 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 you know an insane homicidal praying mantis. And um, and so you know being able to kind of like take new wrinkles for these characters, um, Brack, for example. Um, we added a really fun little wrinkle for him that it's like, oh, that's exactly what's what an opportunist like Brack would be doing in this universe. Um, and and uh, figuring out ways to kind of populate this universe in an organic way and give each of these villains their own niche. Um, somebody like, like the that. widow, for example, who, you know, she's not some yeah, she's not somebody who um is gonna be like diving in, you know, fists first. Um, like you know, like, like somebody like, uh, like Metallus maybe, you know, um, or, 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 or Brack or Zorak. So it's thinking like, okay, how do we kind of frame her, uh, and her unique abilities, um, in a way that like still, uh, poses a threat to Space Ghost. And uh, I'm, and meanwhile, also seeing like the way that she winds up interacting with Jan, where like she sees Jan's the only girl in this yeah. and in a, in a weird way has like kind of a like almost like a sick maternal instinct over her like that's mm. like very interesting to me. um and so yeah these characters uh, like i said alex toth uh he delivered so many incredible villains and you can see how archetypical and iconic they are just based on the designs and so that's been a real fun challenge is like how do we honor that original vision but also like keep digging deeper and keep finding new ways to like to make these characters as dynamic and active and, and unique from one another as possible. So um, the, the, the great way that we're kind of exploring that is structurally. Um, uh, we're doing a lot of done in one stories with this series. Um, Dynamite has really offered us a very generous runway. I've got a little over a year's worth of stories planned already. Oh, nice. And, uh, with room for That's more, fun. the desire the demand is there. But we're doing a lot of done-in ones um, because I, the books that I'm responding to the most right now, that's what they're doing. You see Ryan North's Fantastic Four. You see Steve Orlando's Scarlet Witch. You see uh, what Jed McKay is doing on Moon Knight. And, you know, those are all, all very self-contained stories where if you pick up an issue of Space Ghost every month, you're like, oh, I'm going to get a self-contained story with a beginning, middle, and end, a new villain every month. And that way, when we do occasionally do uh, like a two-parter, that's when we like really reclaim the power of the cliffhanger. That means things are going real sideways for Space Ghost. Um, he's really on his heels if this needs to take two issues. Um, and I learned that uh, working on my Fantastic Four two-parter at Marvel is that like, oh, 
doing a two-parter like that cliffhanger is a really natural nice break uh yeah speaking um and so we're, we're gonna save those for like the biggest and baddest threats for space ghost um and then we might have a, a you know a three-parter uh you know down the line for something really ambitious um but yeah we're really kind of we're, we're trying to keep these adventures self-contained and i think that speaks to the episodic format of the original series but also you know i, I am fully cognizant that uh, there's a whole generation of readers who only know Space Ghost as a talk show host. Uh, you know, like that could have been me. And so uh, for me, it's like, how do we get readers up to speed as fast as possible? And it's it's by doing those self-contained episodes. It's racking up all, all these different adventures over a variety of different tones and genres that people will start to realize like, oh, there's there's more to him. That, uh, that, that original vision still has merit and that uh, there's a reason why we're reclaiming him as the greatest superhero in the galaxy. Um, and so, yeah, it's been, it's been really fun. And I think for me as a writer, uh, especially as one, a writer who often gets restless, this has been a real gift for me because I, you know, we can do like a high flying adventure and then we can do, uh, you know, a, like almost like a heist issue. And then we can also do, uh, you know, an issue that's, uh, you know, even a little spookier in tone. And so it's been a really nice, uh, it, it speaks to the the the, the uh, enduring uh, characteristics of Space Ghost as a character that you can tell such a wide variety of uh, spectrum of stories and uh, they all still feel organic to the character. I, I, I think it's, uh, yeah, it, it's, I, it's one of those things that I, I, I am still continually shocked by my good fortune because like I said, um, when I when they first approached me to do this character, I was like, how has this not been done before? And I think it's because, you know, in a lot of ways, coast to coast, I I have to thank them. I really owe them. They kind of they're they're the reason why Space Ghost is still alive. But it was such they a departure them, yeah. from the original. Yeah. It was such a, de a departure from that original vision that in a lot of ways, the bones of Space Ghost, it was almost like it, it encased them in amber, you know? And I get to be the archaeologist that, like, gets to X. That's a cool those. analogy. Yeah, and, that, and, and, and seeing that they're just as strong as they were in 1966 um, and, and, and just as, as, as valid and just as evocative. Um, and so, yeah, uh, you know, the, the, the word I keep going back to is potential. There's a universe of potential to these characters, um, and uh, getting being the one who's able to explore that um, it's it's a real gift. Awesome. So when does the comic come out? Sure. Uh, issue one comes out May first, the Wednesday before Free Comic Book Day, and um, yeah, initial order cutoff is this week, and final order cutoff is April eighth. So uh, if you call your local comic shop, we've got a ton of, of amazing covers. Uh, Francesco Mattina is doing our our, our uh, A cover. Uh, Jay Lee is doing our B cover. Bjorn Behrens is doing our C cover. And Michael Cho is doing our D cover, I believe. And there's a lot of variety of, of different covers. If you're a fan of foil covers, they've got those. Virgin covers, line art covers. They've even got a blank cover. Um, you name it, like your comic shop will probably be able to provide it. And I'm realizing as I'm talking about artists that uh, I've been remiss in that I haven't talked about uh, our secret weapon of the book, which is Jonathan Lau, our artist. And uh, he's sensational. I, I've been a, a huge fan of Jonathan's since his work on Green Hornet uh, with Kevin Smith. Uh, and that was about 15 years ago. Wow. Dynamite came up on my radar. And I, I was really taken at the time of how kinetic his work is. Um, he's got a really fun visual signature where he'll often have like some, like, like, you'll see the air kind of swirling and it's cool because then it kind of shows like okay something just moved real fast here or there's some energy building or something just happened and it's a it's a cool look and so i've been so taken um you know he he nails the action in, in this book for sure um you know they're uh, it's super kinetic uh you know space ghost hits like a truck uh, we have a sequence in issue two that i remember writing it and being like okay that's like a fun thing to do you know just to kind of show space ghost in action and then Jonathan drew it, and I was like, "This is the most beautiful sequence I've ever been a part of." Um, he Splash really, pages, you know, be phenomenal. It's, it's really, it's really beautiful looking. Um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll even go so far as to say it's, 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 it's the sequence where we kind of quickly, quickly recap Space Ghost Origin um, in this brand new continuity. Um, so you'll see it, and you'll be like, "Oh my goodness!" Um, 
but also he's able to switch gears on a dime. And so the character work is just amazing. Uh, you know, it's just a couple pages later, we see Jan and Jace just hanging out in Ghost Planet. And you can see how much like personality these kids have. Um, and it's a really like, uh, it's just, it's, 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 uh, you, you can't help but fall in love with these kids. And I think that's because yeah. of the work that you're doing. And so, um, yeah, I, you know, and he draws like a Terminator, <laughs> you know, I, 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 he, he's churning out a script at least every like three weeks or so. And so, uh, it, it keeps me on my toes and that I'm like, okay, I got to keep up with this guy. Um, so yeah, I, I, uh, I'm, I feel very fortunate to be working with Jonathan and our colorist, uh, Andrew Dollhouse, who I had worked with on a Miles Morales short over at Marvel and was so impressed with his work and, um, yeah, he's, he's on our book at Jonathan's request and they, they, they've worked together before they're, they're a really like kind of well-oiled machine and he adds so much mood and atmosphere to the book that, uh, you know, he's really kind of bringing his A game. And then our, our letterer, Taylor Esposito, who I, I've been friends with for a long time. It's a, it's actually, uh, he's indirectly responsible for me becoming a comics creator. He, he introduced me to uh, my very first colorist, uh, the late Jason Smith. And so, um, Taylor and I have been buddies for a long time. We'd never actually worked together on a project uh, aside from a, a two-page anthology short that that still hasn't seen the light of day. And so uh, being able to finally work with Taylor has been really exciting. And uh, so, yeah, it's, I think it's a team that's so passionate about Space Ghost and really passionate about this project and the story that we're telling. And I think that really inspires all of us to bring our A-game. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm working with a real top-shelf crew and um, I'm excited for readers to get to see uh, all the cool stuff that we've got planned. I'm totally looking forward to the first issue. Um, and let's see, what would, um, who is, what does Space Ghost mean to you? Like, who is he to you? Because to me, I always thought like he was more than just an intergalactic Batman. I mean, yeah. but after reading yeah. that comic, you know, I, he, he was just like, you know, a father yeah, he's figure. And he's, yeah, yeah he, he's I, like, go ahead. I think. You know, it's a great, great question. You know, for me, you know, you strip down the the the, the cosmic adventure, um, which is, I think, you know, that's that's the environment that he works in. I mean, it's not it's not Gotham. You know, it's a it's a wide universe. You know, it's it, it's very much Flash Gordon. You know, it's it's very much Star Wars. It's, um, but I think for me, the the thing is, um, he's a man who's healing, or maybe in desperate need of healing. Um, yeah, and, and that's what kind of makes him this work in progress. And I think it's only it's a man who's realizing that you can't go through life alone. Um, and so, and and it, it's one of those things that for somebody who has been alone for as long as he has been, that's a that's a difficult lesson to learn. You know, there's a little bit of that cognitive dissonance, which I'm sure a lot of people can relate to, where they they they've sort of fallen into a bad habit or fallen into a bad rut. They know it's not good for them. And at the same time, like they almost cling to that bad habit. You know, they've sort of, they've been in it long enough that it's almost painful to try to leave it because then you yeah. have to acknowledge that you've been in it um, and, and you have to acknowledge that it's been bad for you. Um, and so, you know, Space Ghost in that way, you know, there's there's a little bit of arrested development there. Um, and, and so in, in a certain way, that kind of puts them on a little bit more of an even playing field with these two teenagers. Um but yeah, I think you know he's 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 a work in progress. But I think ultimately he there is there is an inherent goodness to him. Um, yeah, it would be so easy to leave those kids. Um, and the fact that as the circumstances kind of pile up, and he realizes like he's their only hope, he's their only option. Um, he does it despite like the convenience, despite the fact that it kind of in some way reminds him of the family that he he already lost. Um, but it winds up being the best possible thing for him. Um, and I, I think, you know, when I first pitched this to, to Dynamite, I gave Dynamite a 30 page pitch document. The only document longer than my pitch document was the notes I took in all the episodes. But I, I said on the very first page, this is the story of how Space Coast uh, reclaims his humanity again. And wow. I think that's that's a mission statement. That's the mission statement. And uh uh yeah, I think you know 
that's what I will say is that, you know, I know it's very reductive to say, oh, he's space Batman or he's space Superman. But you know what? Here's the difference that I can say. And being able to tell a story like this in, in, in sort of a long Halloween uh, uh, sort of thing where we have a beginning, middle and end planned is that um, he's able to grow. He's able to change. He doesn't have to stay static. Um, and I think that's a real rarity in superhero comics, which by their very design, you can only kind of take them so far in any particular run. And more often than not, by the end of that run, you kind of have to put the toys back in the tool or in the toy box. And so uh, we don't have to do that. Um, and, and so being able to kind of like show this character's entire emotional trajectory uh, and, 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 contrast it with all the just this amazing deep bench of villains um yeah honestly it feels like uh it feels like the the the, the kind of superhero story that um uh i wish i could tell all the time uh, that's cool it's, it's yeah well um thank you for um i just want to say thank you for coming on the show once more i mean oh, it's always pleasure. cool to have you um and now that you're doing space ghost 2 is even awesome and um, it's good. For, I mean, I believe that us 90s, 90s kids and people like us are going to be in for a treat when we yeah. um, get this issue on May the 1st. Yep. And um, where can we find you on social media? Sure. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Blue Sky at Pepos D, at David Pepos Comics on Facebook. Uh, you can uh, subscribe to my newsletter, Pep Talks, at bit.ly slash pep news. Or you can uh, visit my website, which is currently under construction at davidpepos.com. We got hit by hackers, so we're kind of rebuilding. Oh, wow. Um, but yeah. And you can also find me at, at a bunch of conventions. Uh, anybody in the LA area, you can find me at WonderCon in just a couple weeks. Uh, I'll be signing, I believe, at Emerald Knights Comics and uh, the uh, Comic Bug in Los Angeles uh, for free comic book day weekend. I'll be at C2E2, San Diego Comic Con, and uh, New York Comic Con as well. Awesome. And of course, you can find me on um, Bryanford 16. And then also you can read the Daily Planet newspaper that I contribute to. And then you can also find me on my this podcast on Earth 16 um, Geek Talk. Um, so yeah. So um, yeah, we're going to definitely post this episode like, really soon. And that way for, you know, yeah. <laughs> well, Signal Boost it. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me. And uh, thank you to everyone listening. Uh, it, it means the yeah. world local comic shop ask them to pre-order space ghost number one adam ask them to add space ghost to your full list uh it, it would mean a lot uh, my puppy's kibble does not come cheap but more importantly I, I i want uh people to show that i want dynamite to see that there's a real demand for this book because uh as as many villains as i've crammed into this book either as uh full-on spotlights or in cameos there are still other deeper cut villains that uh i sadly had to kind of leave on the cutting room floor but uh, there is room for more stories in, in this overall uh, uh, meta arc. Uh, we can really slot them in a nice way. So, uh, yeah, tell your local comic shop you want Space Ghost, and I'll keep writing it as long as they'll have me. Awesome. Well, thanks for being on, David. I mean, I'm looking forward to reading the comic, and I'll actually review it on the Daily Planet website. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much for being on. And um, as I always say, stay ever so awesome. This is Brian Furt 16 signing out.